All right, we are live. Welcome to Jason Hebert Live. I'm your host, Jason Hebert. Hello to everybody in the chat. Heather, <clears throat> Dying Atheist, Maria Gonzalez, uh, Lisa, Chris, all you guys, uh, Chapter, KF, how you guys doing? Uh, if you are into uh, missing persons cases, trying to help solve them, trying to help out the families that we interview, we, we do these interviews nearly every night. So please subscribe below and uh, make sure to set the notification bell to all so that you can hear these stories and, and try to help out. And hopefully you also can help out with tonight's case. Um, let me first, in, uh, let me, let me introduce our guests and then also be sure to check out Be United. Uh, their info is linked below their Facebook page and their website, b-united.org. Check them out. They're a great organization. And let me introduce our co-host, which many of you know, Denise McGarity. Hi, Denise. You are muted, by the way, so you're going to have to unmute yourself. Denise? Okay. Now, so about that. Uh, all right, Good no evening. problem. We can hear you now. How are you? Good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Uh, let me go ahead and bring up some pictures of Enrique, who is our subject for tonight. And we do have his mother on with us to tell his story. So give me just a moment, guys. All right. And this is Enrique Rios, who is the missing. Uh, this story is a little bit different than some of the other ones we cover as um, it there has been a trial and there's a, there is an active investigation, but they do believe they know what happened to him. Uh, however, the uh, the bodies of both him and his friend have not been found. So that's what tonight's about, trying to get someone to come forward who may know something. So let's go over the details of the case, and then we'll introduce Lola Gutierrez, who's Enrique's mother. So on October 17th of 2016, Enrique Rios was picked up by David Frost, Jesus Campos, and Shandale Shannon and brought to a beach along the Sacramento River in Knight's Landing, California. But this was no typical beach trip. It was a setup. The men were furious at Enrique's friend, Elijah Moore, who had allegedly robbed them of three ounces of marijuana earlier in the night in a KFC parking lot in Woodland, California, and they were determined to get revenge. When Enrique refused to give up Elijah's location, David Frost ordered him out of the car, ordered him to strip down and pray, and fired multiple shots in his direction, hitting him in the stomach and head and fatally wounding him. The trio later ate at a Denny's, borrowed a neighbor's truck, and used it to dispose of Enrique's body. On November 4th, just over two weeks later, David Frost's brother Jonathan would find Elijah and do the same to him with his brother, Campos, and Shannon present. Elijah would be killed as well. Two weeks after the arrest, Campos would tell authorities he wanted to, quote, make things right and take them to where Enrique and Elijah were buried but a two hour car ride into the Knights Landing area and neighboring Sutter County yielded no such results. Enrique and Elijah were never found. Tonight we have Lola Gutierrez on to tell Enrique's story in the hopes that somebody who knows something about where Enrique may be will please come forward. <clears throat> Even if what you have is a small piece of info, it's very often tiny pieces of info that end up unraveling these whole cases. So please, if you know anything, come forward. It's never a detail too small. And we will go over where you can give that information in just a moment. But tonight, as I said, we do have Enrique's mother on, Lola Gutierrez. Uh, Lola, how are you? I just wanna say I'm so sorry for what you're going through. And uh, you do have the support of myself and my team. Thank you. I'm doing well today, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, do, do you wanna start by maybe just telling us a little bit about Enrique and then kind of lead into everything we do know happened on that day? Yeah, so um, Enrique was 16 and he was a, like a normal teen. He would love to ride his bike. He used to make himself some enchiladas at my mom's house. His favorite dinner was enchiladas and my mom always has a funny story that she would talk about that he tried to make himself enchiladas one day and instead of frying the tortilla, he just put it in the sauce and <laughs> ate, ate it like that, the raw tortilla and everything. And he was eating it like he loved it. I think it was just 
the flavor. He was silly. He, um, his laughter was, it was very contagious. I, I put a video every once in a while on Facebook that shows his, that you, everybody can hear his laughter and it's just beautiful. Um, and he was the biggest, uh, best friend of my daughter. They were just best friends and he was the best big brother and son. Yeah, I, I saw a video of him uh, kind of wrestling with his sister on the bed. I used to do this. I'm eight years older than my sister. I would do the same thing, like flipping her. I was like, oh my God, that, you yeah. know, heart, heartbreaking, of course, but uh, just kind of kind of adorable seeing them interact. That's, the, that's how they were all the time. Okay. Um, and so do you want to go into the details of that day? Uh, they picked him up at home, correct? Who, uh, who else was home? Did, did he say anything to you about where he was going? What, uh, how did that day unfold? So that night, um, my, my husband and Enrique had this nice conversation. They were having a, a good talk and I had gotten home because I was doing your police work and I got home tired. So I made sure everybody was had eaten and then we were all tired so i went to tuck my daughter into bed we uh, my husband and i we went to bed and i told enrique good night and then I was in bed already. yeah yeah you were asleep already and then um enrique came in after i laid down it was like 10 minutes maybe 15 minutes and now that i think back i think the reason he came in to say good night was to make sure i was in bed so he could sneak out because he got a call Mm -hmm. So he came into my room. He had his black shorts. He looked like he was going to bed. He's got his black shorts on and a regular white t-shirt. And he said, good night, mama. And I said, good night, hun. Go to bed because you got school in the morning. And he said, okay. So he went to his room. I fell asleep. Everybody went to sleep. And um, in the morning when I woke up, he was not in his room. So that's when everything happened. I I had to call probation to let them know because he was on probation um, because the school that he was at, it, it was uh, probation officers and um, teachers and all that were at the school, you know? So I told them Enrique's not home and I'm not sure where he's at. He's not answering his calls. And they told me, Oh, don't worry about it. We'll try to get a hold of him. And, um, We'll see if he answers to answers us. He never answered them. So later the evening, I made a report with the police department, with the Yolo County Sheriff's Department. And they took the report. They just acted like, oh, he'll come home. It wasn't very serious to them. That's exactly how I took it because the way he acted when he took my report, he was looking around everywhere and taking the report. Um, and I was like, you know, something's wrong because my son will always answer my calls or if it if he doesn't want to answer, he just lets the phone ring and it goes to voicemail after it rings. But this time the phone kept going to straight to voicemail. And I knew it was, it just felt different. You know, you just have this feeling that something's wrong. Mother's and, instinct or something like that. Yeah. And I, they didn't want to believe me. And I, I know that if they would have start, started searching for him then and started pinging his phone then, we probably would have been able to at least save Elijah. If Enrique was gone then, then we would have been able to save Elijah. These guys would be in jail for whatever they did, and Elijah would still be here. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so... This started because, and again, um, we're just kind of going over, we're trying to piece things together that we know. Um, in no way are we trying to put blame anywhere or anything. We're just kind of going over the facts um, because there are there are many victims in this story. Um, not only just the families that have to deal with it, but you have, you know, Elijah, his mom, as, as well as you, of course. So I just want to be clear that we're we're just trying to piece things together. But allegedly it was because Elijah had had some kind of run-in at a KFC with one of the guys? That's what they're saying. They're saying that Elijah stole, um, he was gonna buy marijuana off, off of them and then he took off running with, uh, with the marijuana, I, I believe. And they were all mad at him. So they went to 
um, they were trying to look for Elijah, but he had taken off. And that's when, that's when they decided, well, we can't find Elijah, but we'll, um, we'll try to get a hold of their friends that know where Elijah is at. So they called other people too. And the only one that answered was Enrique. Ugh. So that's the one they got. There was other kids that had to go into the trial when we were um, talking about when we were on trial for David Frost. And those kids were scared, the ones that were up on the stand, because they could have been in Enrique's shoes. So they knew exactly what could have happened to them if they would have answered. Right. So, yeah. I... Just imagine knowing that, wow, that guy called me and look what happened. That's, that's... got to be scary. Um. Uh, so we're, I'm assuming, partic particularly because he seemed to kind of um, stand up for his friend and not give up his location. Was he good, good friends with Elijah? Or was, or was he just someone he knew from school or? It was somebody he knew from school. They were, they were friends. Um, but that's just Enrique. That's exactly how he was. Um, like if my, if my stepdad would go eat somewhere with Enrique and my little brother, um, and my mom would be like, where'd you guys go? Did you guys eat anywhere? And Enrique would stick up for him and he wouldn't say one word. He wouldn't say, based, you know how teens say snitching? He would never yeah. say anything about anyone. He would never talk about anyone. That was just him. Just kind of a loyal to the bone type of kid. Yeah, basically, yeah. Okay, Denise, uh, I'm gonna go over some pictures. I know you have a couple questions if you'd like to. Denise. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's freezing again. Um, did he have his cell phone with him? Yeah, he took his cell phone with him. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, I think there, uh, because she froze, um, there might be a slight delay. So if okay. it sounds like we're all talking over each other, we're not. Um, okay, so. good. Yeah, there's a delay. She's answering the court. Okay. Uh, yeah, Denise, you're pretty and is that lagging how they right now. With the boys? I I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Okay. There you go. Okay. Um, Can you hear me now? A yes. Yeah, we get a heck of a okay, lag. Good. Denise, um, Denise, Denise wait, you did are. Did they find his cell phone? No, they never found that. Um, apparently, the person that took the cell phone okay. was um, Shondell, and he turned it off. And I kept texting Enrique, and as the messages would come in, because Shondell would turn the phone back on. Um, that's how they kind of figured out where Enrique's location was because, and then they saw it going back to Woodland because Shondell had the phone and he took it back to Woodland with him. And he's the one that kept texting me and telling me, oh yeah, mom, I'm fine. I just want to be a free man. But that, I knew that's not him, how Enrique spoke or wrote. So we found out later that it was Shondell that had been texting me. Oh, wow. Okay, he was texting you, pretending to be Enrique. To throw us all off. Awful. Uh, uh, Denise, I think you're back on. You were like a good 20 seconds behind, but uh, the video looks good. Can you hear me right now? Yes. Yeah, um, okay. Um, just give me one second. So, okay. So what, what happened um, at trial? Well, well, first off, before we even go into the trial, it looks like one of them said he was going to lead them to where they were buried. Of course he didn't, uh, but it was a two hour ride all over the place, which of course, if he knew where they were buried, I would assume they'd be going to one specific spot. Do you believe he just wasn't there when they buried him or he was intentionally misleading them, trying to get some kind of favor? for acting like he was helping or well um two of them actually took them out apparently the one that the first one that took them out was jesus i believe jesus campos he took them out and had them driving all over the place i don't know if it's just because he didn't really know the location so he was just kind of like oh it looks like it's over here or maybe it was over there and that's why he kept having them go all over but 
who knows? He may have been just doing that to steer them off of where they actually were buried. Right. And he had mentioned some landmarks that they might be near. Can you go over those in case anyone knows the area and is trying to help find? Well, he said that they were in a in an area that was close to the water. And when he looked up, he saw a house in the distance, just like one house with lights on in the house. Um, but they when they passed by there earlier that there was this big it looked like a like a water tube or something that had a wheel at the end and it was reddish so that's kind of in the area where they were out in night's landing okay so we got one house you can see in the assuming this is actually where they are right. um some uh, what i read here is trees a lone house in the distance and then it says a pipe jutting from the ground which i'm guessing is the reddish thing you're talking about yeah, and it had like the you know how the water pipes have like this wheel that you turn it to turn the water on and off that's apparently what it had and has i'm assuming there have been searches and stuff have you guys has anyone ever come close to thinking they had found that or tried to check with city officials like hey where would this kind of thing be or something like that well i have a friend that's been helping the investigators and he's been helping the there's a canine search group that has gone out there and he went out with one of the canine search members and they were looking around and I think he actually found that area or a few areas that kind of look like that. Um, so they were afterwards, the canine search team went out there and, and searched too, but the police has been out there also in that, in that area and they've done ground penetrating radar. They've done everything they can to see if they could see something in the ground. And so far they haven't seen anything. Okay. Oh, so they have done the rate, the ground penetrating radar. That was going to be my next question. Mm -hmm. uh, Denise, can you hear us? I can't. Can you hear me? Uh, a, a little bit. Did Did you want to ask a question? I've been I've been kind of leading it just because I'm having trouble with the video and audio on your end, but I want to make sure you get your questions she, in as well. She answered the question. Right. Uh, she answered the question that I was going to ask um, about the ground searches. Is it still going on? Yes. So I don't know for sure if the investigators are still searching, but there's a private company that's been going out and, and searching for us. Okay. And as soon as the detective okay. said that he could release information regarding like to the areas where, where they need to search still, um, as soon as he is able to give me that information, then we're going to have the canine search team go back out there again. And maybe this time we could have members from the community go and help us so we can have more people cover more areas. For sure. And that was going to be my next question. If someone okay. wants to join in the search, uh, would the, the yeah. best place to contact you be um, Enrique and Elijah's Facebook group or your own personal Facebook or email or? They, if they want to message me, sometimes I don't see the messages on the Elijah and Enrique group. Um, but if they want to send me a message through Messenger, I'm always checking the extra messages for, for people that aren't my friends. So I can, if they want to message me there, I could see it. Okay. And I also, I had opened up a tip line. Um, and actually, we after a few weeks that the boys went missing, um, a lady had gone to, and I'm hoping she hears this and comes forward because we really need her. A lady came forward and called us from a payphone and said, and Enrique and Elijah are, had been kidnapped by his suit, by uh, Jonathan and Shondell. And that's all she said. She hung up quickly. She sounded really scared. But if she's hearing right now, I'm, I'm hoping she could come forward. Um, I opened up a tip line just in case some people don't like to call the police. Uh, that number, is that okay for me to give it over the phone or do you want to put it in the link or something? Uh, you can do both. I just always, I, I leave that up uh, up to you guys, but I just always warn you when you give on numbers publicly, a lot of bad messages do come in sometimes. You get so fake let's, ransoms. Let's, and, uh. let's just do the Facebook then. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, I know you're dealing with so much already. I just want to yeah. make sure, you know, but, um, 
yeah, so you can message her Facebook, as she said, um, and maybe if you get to know her, she'll give you the number or something like that. Uh, you're gonna all, we're gonna give the number for the authorities, of course, right. by the end of this broadcast. And uh, you always can message me, but guys, I always do make it a point to tell you, it really doesn't make tons of sense to message me instead of the family or the authorities. But for whatever reason, like she said, if you're only comfortable talking to me or something, I will pass along a message. And I'm sure Denise would be willing to do the same. Um, Denise, absolutely. Oh no, I, I thought you were frozen. You're not. Okay. <laughs> you were just being still. Um, so Lola, w- without, I don't want to make you relive the details um, of the trial because it sounds like we're pretty certain of what happened. Um, and it, so at this point, if that's the case, some of the details, um, they're not as important as uh, things that will lead us to find him. But is there anything at trial that was said or that would lead you to believe maybe uh, something where he may be, um, maybe someone else that may know something that we could try to contact, uh, you know, besides that woman you just mentioned, well, is there anything else that was said? Yeah, there, um, like you mentioned earlier, there was somebody that they went to pick up a truck from his house mm-hmm. to borrow it. Um, if he sees this too, and I don't want him to think he's a, he's snitching. We just need to know where they're at. If he knows anything, if he went to see what they did, if he could come forward, he doesn't. Have, he doesn't have to tell anybody. I'm not. I don't want to say his name because I don't want to put him on blast. But he knows who he is, and if he sees this, I I'm begging that he come forward with any information that he might have regarding where they were or anything. Just any any detail is not too small. Okay, so so you know who he is, though, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So, yes, yeah, sir. I mean, if, if there's anything you know, please come forward. Or even if you don't know anything, I'm sure Lola would like to talk to you either way to just to clarify and make sure. Um, okay. Uh, Denise, I'm going to go over some pictures. Do you want to get a question in? I want to make sure we include you. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, during court, did um, I know you made an impact statement. And so did um, Elijah's mother. Did they respond to anything at all after that? Uh, David Frost? Or who? Yes. He didn't even look um, at me. It, it w- I was reading my letter. Okay. And, um, as, There's I, a slight delay. as I was reading my letter, he I kept saying, David, look at me. And he not even once did he look at me. He was going through his papers, acting like nothing was being said, acted acted like I wasn't even talking to him. So he didn't. And then after okay. I read the impact statement, I printed off the letter that I made and I sent it to him in the prison. So he received mail from me. And it was the impact. Okay, statement. so he did. All right. And of course, but- still no response to the letter, right? No, no response. I put the DA's address, so if you wanted to respond, you can mail it to them, and they would give it to me, but no response. Okay. That was also a question I had. So, um, allegedly, it was about two weeks, I think two weeks and a day or so apart from what happened to Elijah, to what, um, from what happened to Enrique first, excuse me, to what happened to Elijah. But as far as we know, are they definitely in the same place, or do we not even know that? I, I just remember from the trial they had told Elijah, we're going to bury you where your, your friend is buried. But I don't know if they put them in the same spot or if they're in the general location. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, sure. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so, so we're not sure, but it sounds like they're at least close to each other. Um so guys, if you if that area rings a bell to you, again, we're going off the words of some pretty bad guys here. So who knows if they're even telling the truth, but all indications seem to be that they are as far as this goes anyway. Um, so if you know this area, again, it's along the water, the Sacramento River. There's like a beach near there. There's one house in the distance with, what did you say, a reddish pipe sticking out with the wheel? Yeah. 
So if that area sounds familiar to you, I know there's a, uh, we've done actually a lot of cases in Sacramento, which is uh, the way I found out about Lola was from a friend who I had previously interviewed. So uh, I know we have a lot of listeners in that area. So uh, if you know, if you, if this area sounds somewhat familiar, if you stumble across it, please let the authorities or Lola know. Um, and on top of that, um, I mean, not, I'm losing my train of thought here. So if you stumble across the area or if you already know it, please come forward. If there's any way you think resembles that, please let us know. Yeah, because we also know that the night where they, when they murdered Elijah, when they put him in the spot where they were going to bury him, they, they set him on fire. Oof. And the, the flames started getting way too high and they were afraid that they were going to get caught. So if anybody saw fires out in the area of Knight's Landing around November 4th air, uh, day. That's the day when he went missing. If they saw fires out in the country or anything, if, maybe if they could come forward and let us know the kind of general location so we can let the police know. So Absolutely. the fire got too high and they had to put it out because it was getting too high. So obviously it was a big fire and they got scared. So they put it out. And that was November 4th of 2016, correct? Just so right. everyone. Yes. Okay, so how so we went over that Elijah and Enrique knew each other from school. How did he know these other three or four guys? Because he, uh, he obviously must have trusted at least one of them to go out with them that night, right? Yeah, um, I'm not too sure how he knew the the others, but him and Jesus were around the same age, so they knew each other from school. All of, okay, him and Jesus. Yeah. B United Missing Persons asked, was the site search for Elijah's remains? But uh, we don't, we're not even really sure of the site, and there have been a lot of searches, correct? Right, been a lot of searches. Um, uh, this and they is... stated it was near water? Yes, that's what, apparently that's what they're saying. But once again, I don't know if we can really believe or if they're uh, putting us off to a different location well, that it's not really there. So we have the man with the truck. Okay. We have the woman who made the phone call. If either of you are listening, Lola needs you to come forward. Is there anybody else that you, I mean, besides obviously we could say like these kids friends or something like that, but is there any other names? And if you don't want to give names, you don't have to, but any other people, you know, for sure that you feel like so-and-so may know something and you want to give them a direct message. Yeah. Um, the Frost's brother, one that's not involved. I don't want to say his name either. Um, but if he could just message me and, and give me anything he knows, anything, the smallest detail, it doesn't matter, but if he knows anything, anything at all, it might help. So if he could come forward and uh, send me a message too. Okay, and so the trial is over for the, the men or the boys, right? For David Frost, it's over. They are gonna try Jesus and Shondell separately. And then okay. at the end of all okay. the trial, then Jonathan Frost will be sentenced. Because he's the one that got the plea deal. Okay. And he was the one that killed uh, Elijah, but it was David, uh, we'll say allegedly, even though some of them have been charged, but uh, was with the, was the one for Enrique, correct? Well, they all participated in, in Elijah's murder, all four of them. Um, they all were beating him with like a log or something. Uh, all four of them took turns doing that. And then even though they knew he was dead, David Frost went up to him and shot him in the head. Even though he was sitting there, you could tell he was dead, apparently, from what they, the other guys said. And David Frost still went over and shot him in the head and then grabbed another big log and smashed his head with it. Shot a man, smashed his head. Yep. When he's laying there helpless, basically. Um. Uh, photo zombies, the last couple I didn't, but typically I do. Uh, they're just saying that I don't have links. Uh, every video except for the last couple, I realized that I hadn't posted the link, so I will shortly. But most of them I do. 
photos on me. Sorry about that. Uh, we have a few questions. Uh, does law enforcement appear to believe the theory uh, and are police helping to try to solve this case? Do you feel you have good support from them? Um, now, I, because they know that my son's not a runaway, they've classified him as a runaway at the beginning. Now I have a little bit more support. Um, I think I have more support and more more support and I've been more in communication with the DA more than um, the detectives still and I would like more communication because at least once a week saying give me an update give me tell me something and I don't get I don't get that but sometimes I'll message them and they'll message me back sometimes sometimes they'll message me back mm. and I mean this this is kind of a, a silly question with the trial and everything but what it seems like we are a hundred percent sure that what they're saying happened happened. And there's absolutely no chance of any kind of like runaway or anything like that. We're pretty sure, pretty sure yeah. that this happened. Okay. Yeah. Because at the beginning when they first got arrested, Shondell um, had an interview with the Davis enterprise and he supposedly saying that he was just a witness that didn't come forward and all that. But um, afterwards they had, uh, they had a Perkins off. It was all in the trial. So this isn't information that um, I'm bringing up that I shouldn't be, but this was in the trial. And it, they said that they had a Perkins off with Jesus Campos. That's where they put um, another person in the cell with him. I don't know if it was a police officer or another criminal or whatever, but they put him in the cell with him and he was wired or they had audio in there to hear and Jesus was telling him, yeah, we shot them. We shot them both. And it, who was your friend? Oh, Enrique was my friend. And who did what? And he was telling what everybody did. We all listened to that in the trial. So, and he didn't even think he was, he was being recorded. And so he was saying all that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no way that this didn't happen. They're, they are all talking about it. And I'm sorry, I know that's kind of a, a silly question since we seem to know, but just, you know, in case there was any hope at all. Yeah. Um, okay. I had hope at first, but after we found all this out, then now I just hope we can find my son's body. Yeah, I saw the initial video of you uh, saying basically, Enrique, where are you? Can you come home? And that, that was heartbreaking. I mean, not in those words, yes. of course, but yeah, absolutely. Do, is this a lot of farm area around the area? Yeah, Knights Landing has a lot of rural area, so it's a lot of open okay. fields and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. And they said it was a two hour drive or do they well, know about how, how long it took? Well, that's how long. That's how long he took him around. He, that's how long Jesus took the police officers around. So okay. I don't know. I don't know where exactly, but he took them around different places, and they took two hours trying to search. Okay. Sorry, just responding to some of the comments about the links. Um, yeah. Okay. So, kind of uh, extension of what Denise just said. Yeah. So the two-hour ride. Um, it said they took them to the Knights Landing and also the neighboring county, right? Better County. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Is that, how how long of a stretch is that, and why did they search both? I, I was responding when you just answered that, so if you answered this already, I apologize. But um, I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not too sure how far, but apparently they're close to close to the Sutter County area. I don't know. I don't know 100% because it's, I've been hearing tons of different stories that I can't remember them all. I have, my brain isn't working correctly. That's uh, understandable. Uh, are, are any of these stories about somewhere else where they may be buried? And are there any specifics in those stories? Yeah, they've also brought up some, uh, some place in Knight's Landing called okay. Mary's Lake. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it sounds familiar to anybody, but they they're talking about Mary's Lake and Second Beach. And I can't really remember any other names. 
Okay. Mary's Lake and Second Beach. And these other stories are that that is where one of one or both are. Yeah, and around that area. That's what they're saying, but once again, I don't know for sure. Okay, so if anybody watching recognizes any of those names, uh, have you run like a simple like a Google search or something like that, or do you think it's something maybe like a nickname versus the actual? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think I've ever done a search. They just they showed us the maps and areas where um, those areas were in the trial. Okay, so that so they know. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Denise, uh, I want to make sure everyone gets their gets their questions out. So I guess for Denise and Lola, um, of course, if there's anything you want to say to anyone specifically, by all means. But um, mm -hmm. uh, also, if there's anything I didn't that I didn't think to ask throughout it throughout the interview that you think might be important for anyone trying to look or anyone that may know any info or anything like that. Uh, Lola, is, is there anything? Oh, you're talking that, to me. <laughs> uh, well, uh, sorry, I, I worded sorry. that weird. I kind of no, I started saying it to Denise, then I lumped you in, so I worded it weird. Sorry. Um, yeah, is there is there anything that uh, that we didn't think to ask that you want to make that you feel is impertinent information that is out there in regards to whether it be where they may be, what happened that night, uh, any of the reasonings behind anything? Well, there was. I don't really have anything uh, regarding that, but I do want to say that there was lots of rumors towards the beginning of when they first went missing. So because Jesus Campos was talking to people, he was telling his friends the, the story of what happened. And so lots of people were talking and they were saying, oh, those guys are dead. Those fools are dead already. And they, I would see these messages all over Facebook. So somebody has to know something for sure. There has to be someone that has information that David, Shondell, or Jesus, or Jonathan said something to them. Um, maybe Jonathan's ex-girlfriend, I don't know if she's still his girlfriend, if if he said anything to her, um, anybody. Because right now nobody's talking and that's what's really irritating me because somebody has to know. For sure there has to be somebody that they spoke with and that knows what happened or that saw something. Um, but nobody wants to say anything and I don't understand what they're in jail. Nothing's going to happen to them. They're not going to get beat up by these guys. These guys are in jail for and probably for life. So we just need them to come forward already because I can't bring my son home, but I would like to bring his body home already. It's been four years and I need him home. It's incredibly, it's so, so awful that nobody wants to say anything. And somebody knows for sure. I do. I feel that that somebody out there knows, and they just don't want to say. Yeah, guys. In in a case like this, when that many people have been told, someone has to come forward. And there's 80 people, 82 people in the chat now. We've had about 400 come in and out throughout this. So, I would imagine this is placed in a lot of California groups. Uh, Lola has put it. So I, I would imagine somebody watching this now, or at least in the beginning has to know something, please come forward guys. Again, it's always a tiny little bit of information. And some of us, wow, I didn't think that would do anything, but there's always little clusters of mm -hmm. tiny bits of information. And once you get a few pieces, put them together, it unravels. And uh, there's, there's literally no such thing as too small to matter in these situations. Mm -hmm. right. um, so I was going to ask about the girlfriends um, of the um, suspects and has any of them been questioned? I believe when they were uh, questioning the boys. Yeah, I believe that a lot of them, the like girlfriends and different people were all interviewed. Um, but some people don't want to say they don't know. Or okay. They don't or just they don't want to talk and if the if the police doesn't have um the right information they can't it, if someone doesn't want to talk they just don't have to talk if it's an interview that's right so. yeah and i mean they'll 
it got if you gotta leave an anonymous tip leave an anonymous tip anybody that's scared i, I get especially kids like the whole not snitching thing and all that but like, like she says these guys are just up in the body come on. i don't think that even qualifies as snitching does it yeah the um like the girl that called anonymously she called my my google number because i had it all over flyers everywhere um she told us that and the police were able to start investigating and, and pinging um the phones and researching facebook to see if they found anything regarding who was the last people that saw enrique and that's because of her tip we were able to start moving forward with this so something small like that you know oh i didn't know if it's for sure but and uh jonathan and chandel kidnapped enrique that's when the police finally started taking this seriously because i called them immediately and i was like this number called me she said this and that but they said they couldn't really use it too much because they didn't have her name and i said no no no. you guys still need to look it up so that's when they started um subpoenaing the facebook messengers and all of that Okay. And since Shandale had the phone, they have it now, right? No. Oh. We still haven't found his phone. So he disposed of it after texting you, I guess. Yeah, probably. Probably did. Or sold it. Wow. Okay, so if anybody Can knows they trace phones if they're sold? I don't think so if the sim's been remote moved i don't think so i don't think okay. they're dumb enough to leave the sim card in there still right i wouldn't think so either but just trying to um, see if they were able to if they're able to do that was it just one of them that came forward about where the bodies are? Or have they all talked and given the same story or given the same story? For the most part, they're kind of all saying the same thing. But the one that came forward and is trying, it was trying to help the investigators went on the stand with um, in the courtroom and everything is Jonathan Frost. And I mean, I don't want to sound dumb or anything but i'm actually very thankful that he came forward and that he was on the stand and he was talking because we needed him we needed that information to to be able to lock these guys in in for life he's some he's somebody very important to this case that he's telling us all this information so we can know it and we can know where to go but it said campos is the one that led them on that two hour drive right jonathan took them out too because he part oh. of his deal was Part of his deal was going out and trying to find the bodies. So he took them out there too, and he tried and he tried and he couldn't find them supposedly. So both of them apparently tried to take them to him and couldn't find them. That's odd. Wow. So who knows? What if David moved them? I don't know. Maybe because yeah. he thought everybody was, was starting to figure stuff out maybe he went back and moved them again maybe he used his friend's truck again and moved them i don't know or maybe because of the fire maybe he brought elijah where enrique was the fire happened then he said oh crap now we're found out get them out of here yeah. kind of thing yeah probably so any of the aforementioned people please come forward anybody who may have seen a fire on uh no it was november 4th 2016 um, because evening. it was pretty high fire in the evening. Uh, do you know the approximate time? Uh, they picked Elijah up. I, I want to say after school, after he cashes check. So maybe around four 30, they picked him up and then they took him out to night's landing, but they left David Frost picked them up with all, with everybody. And they left. Shondell and Jesus with Elijah where they were going to bury him, where they were going to do whatever they were going to do to him. They left him there and David and Jesus Campos went to Home Depot to buy supplies to do what they were going to do to Elijah. And they came back when it was already in the evening. So it was sometime 
maybe around six or seven, I want to say. Okay. Yeah, so please, guys, if you know anything, come forward. Denise, uh, do you have any? I'm going to finish up with some pictures. No, that's okay. Yeah, she answered my questions that I had. Um, you know, I agree. It, 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 whether it's a little a thing or not, somebody needs to come forward. This is devastating for families not to know, not to find out. It's it's heartbreaking, and my heart goes out to Lola all the time. Um, just knowing what you're going through, and I'm so sorry. This reminds me of me and my sister. Oh, it breaks my heart. It looks just like me and yeah. my sister when we were kids. Yes. Um, all right, Lola. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on. I am going to go over um, some of the details So, thank, uh, as far as how they can contact the authorities. But I, I thank you so much for sharing Enrique's story, which is the important thing. Uh, if Elijah's mother is listening to this and wanted to do the same, by all means, uh, she could come on to tell Elijah's uh, side of the story, we'll say. Um, we would always be open to that. I, that's how I, the show is open to anybody that wants to come on that may be missing someone or may have some kind of injustice to them, anything like that. If you know anyone, send them forward. Uh, before I give out the information for the authorities, Lola, uh, I, I kind of asked this already, so I'm sorry for repeating it, but I just want, just for the sake of thoroughness, is there anything that wasn't covered that you think can be helpful that you want to make sure is out there? Or do you want to speak to anyone directly Any, anything along those lines? No, I just want everybody to know that four years is too long. I had my own health issues and I almost lost my own life because of the worrying, because of, not, of the not knowing. And this isn't just my son was murdered and that's it. It was, it's my life almost ended out of all my stress. My family's lives are, have, we've all been tormented over this. And it's just, they don't think about what, when they do something, that it doesn't just hurt that person they did it to. It ha it hurts everybody around them, their friends, people in the community that always reach out to me and say how much they love Enrique, even though they didn't me they didn't meet him. And whoever knows any information, I just want them to come forward because four years is way too long to be waiting to be able to bury my son somewhere where he deserves to be. He deserves to be alive, but he deserves to be somewhere where we can go and see him and um, take flowers to him right now i don't know where he's at so if anybody could please please come forward um i've been begging for four years but hopefully they they could come forward finally after watching this absolutely guys and the the links the links will be below uh and, oh and if you wanted to go to law enforcement, which is probably the preferable way, law enforcement or Lola, um, you would contact Yolo County Sheriff. And yes, that is a real county, Yolo. I didn't believe that when I first saw it. 530-666-8282. That's Yolo County Sheriff, 530-666-8282. Case number 163000. That's one six dash three zero zero zero, or Sacramento, California FBI field office nine one six seven four six seven thousand, and their case number is seven C like Charlie, S like Stephen, C like Charlie, two one one three five seven one. And there's a link there. You can always go to b-united.org. They take tips as well. They're just a missing persons group, kind of like me, that we work with, just trying to help people get answers. So please check out their website. Uh, Lola, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you were amazing. You represented Enrique extremely well. I know he's very proud of you. And um, I just, I just want to thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you letting me um, bring his story, try to bring his story alive again, because the news, they haven't even checked in. They haven't been helping with covering stories or anything anymore. Um, his four, his anniversary will be coming up in, on October 17th, and we're probably going to be doing uh, like a, a vigil where people can light up candles and stuff for him.
So we, we had that last year too. So we're probably gonna do something the same, but I really appreciate you covering his story. Absolutely, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to, and th thank you. Thank you for allowing me to, and I'll, I'll spend the whole night pumping this out to every true crime group I'm in and everything. And if there's anything Absolutely. further I can do, please let me know. And I'm sure Denise would say the same. Uh, it's okay. Uh, yeah, Denise, no, I was just saying that Lola can contact me for anything she needs going forward and I'll stay in touch. And I told her, I'm sure you feel the same, correct? Absolutely. Anytime you need to talk, you can always call. Thank you. All right, Lola, thank you so much. And guys, come forward if you know something and let's bring Enrique home, please. We're pleading with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. All right. Have a great night, girls. You both did awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you to the chat. Have a great night, guys.